welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well today. I'm Lady Starfire, and today I want to talk to you about thinking outside the box. Now, you see a lot of things here. I've got incense, I've got a cauldron, a matches, a sea salt, a bowl, a candle, and a feather. Now, how many think that any of these items are thinking outside the box? No, they're actually not. Let's just imagine you find yourself in the middle of the woods. And for some reason, you need to do a circle. You have no supplies with you. So what are you going to use? Because you need to set up, you know, a makeshift altar for each direction. So what's out there that you can use uh, in place of your sea salt? For earth or bowl of dirt for those that you know keep that on their altar well granted out in the woods you have plenty of things you can use for earth of course you have dirt you got leaves you got bark you have all sorts of things there that you can gather for earth but what else could you maybe get that represents earth you know this is what's called thinking outside the box and it's a really good thing to think about and get in the habit of you know you could find yourself anywhere and you know maybe you're in a concrete jungle what are you going to use okay yeah you know, out in the woods is kind of, you know fairly easy for most things but even still with that uh what are you going to use for water there's no creeks so what are you going to use to represent water well i mean some ideas might be if it's in the morning there might be morning dew on a leaf you know you could get one of those leaves with that dew and there's your water you know, maybe you carried something to drink with you, okay? So that can suffice, even if it's coffee or tea or whatever it is, it can suffice. Now, what about your fire? All right, we're not going to start a fire in the middle of the woods. And in the concrete jungle, you got nothing to start it with because guess what? We don't get to have matches or lighters, okay? This is thinking outside of the box. So, what you're trying to look for here is something that can represent these elements to you. All right. So uh, look around and see what's there that may possibly, you know, represent those elements to you. Don't have to mean it for anybody else. You know, maybe a bird was nice and dropped you a feather. Okay. So obviously it wanted you to use that. That's great. But otherwise, you know, Yes, does that represent air? It does, but you didn't have one with you. So what else can you use depending on where you are? These are things to think about. And for those of you that are taking my classes, uh, guess what? This falls in some of the classes. So you might want to get a head start on coming up with things that can represent different elements. And it's only important that it represents it to you. You know, I might say that my husband is my earth because if I need grounding, he's great at grounding me. You know, um, he's also, he could also be my air. Now, you can't use the same thing for each thing, but you can, um, you know, choose something for one element. But I'm just giving an example, you know, because he's the air that I breathe, so he could represent air as well. He's very fiery. He is part Scorpio after all. So, you know, he could represent fire. Now, he can show emotion. So, therefore, he could also represent water. So, you know, these are things, you know, that I'm saying that to help you to think about it. Um, you might have anything on you in your possession that you're able to find. To represent each of the elements once again it only has to represent it to you you know and if you're in my classes you have to be able to explain to me how it represents that element to you and that's fine as long as it's feasible I don't have a problem with it but you can't use your spouse for all four elements uh, and then there's also spirit to think about for the fifth element what is that one for you now, but anytime we're doing things, we need to learn how to think outside of the box. That box. Hate those boxes. 
You know, we get stuck in them. Even in a relationship, you know, too many times we get stuck, you know, meeting the same type of people and it always ends badly. Well, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. Okay. So get out of that box that, you know, we get stuck in because whether it's that people, society, whatever puts us in it, we allow ourselves in it or we put ourselves in it because we think this is all we can do. You know, this is how it's taught. So that's all I can do. No, it's not. Think about things, you know, figure out what you can do, what you can use when you're outside of your altar room or your living room or wherever you hold your circles at. You know, what is some other items that you can use when you're somewhere else and just something happens? I, you know, I don't feel safe. I want to do a quick, you know, protection ritual. Granted, do you have to have all these items to do it? No. But this exercise is about finding these items, having these items, you know, of some sort to be able to use to represent each element. Um, it's not a matter of whether you have to have them or not. It's just a little exercise that I'm trying to give you at this point. I, you know, and I would love it if y'all would leave in the comments, you know, some of your ideas that you come up with for the different elements and thinking outside of the box. You know, I love the reading about, or, you know, even when I'm teaching classes, I, I love to see what people come up with as their uh, different items for, you know, being outside of the box for the different elements. Don't forget about spirit now, okay, because that one's also important. But, you know, see what you can come up with. Really think about it, you know, and try different scenarios. You know, if you're in the woods, if you're in a desert, uh, in, you know, an area that it's all concrete, but you need to do a ritual there. And, you know, you, I don't want to hear, well, I just carry everything with me everywhere I go. That's not thinking outside the box either. I want to see things that are not normal, you know. Not everybody's going to walk around with a candle because you're probably going to melt in the summertime, all right. You don't walk around with anathema because, as a general rule, guess what? They're illegal. You know, yes, you have an athame where you go. You can have a wand by picking up a stick. Um, but what else can you use? You know, something that's not of the usual, okay? So let's really stop and think about it. Uh, please leave me comments and let me know what kind of things you come up with. I, I really like it when we interact. Um, I'm trying really hard to get some uh, lives done. So we can actually interact, you know, in real time. It's just every day that I plan one, my store gets packed with people. So I'm thankful for the business, but I really want to be able to interact with you, you know, in real time. Uh, that I enjoy that. I like the face-to-face. -face. This isn't exactly, but at least if you can post things to me while we're talking and I can answer your questions right then. You know, it's at least a little bit closer, and that's what I enjoy doing. Let me know what you think about this idea of thinking outside of the box, and how are you going to do this? I'm really excited. I can't wait to read your comments and figure out what you've done that's outside of the box. So I hope you have learned something from this, and I hope you continue to learn in your journey of discovering what things you can come up with in different scenarios to be able to represent each of the elements in a circle outside of the norm. So um, click the boxes, share this video. I'm sure there's a lot of people that, you know, could really use this challenge. So share the video with them. And until the next time, everyone, you know, happy hunting. Think of it as a scavenger hunt. And so you get to choose the items. So until the next time, blessed be. Mm -hmm.